So this is the lineup we'll be working with today, and it's also the order that these lasers will appear in the beam shots later. Over here, we've got a collection of Laser 301 and Laser 303s that I acquired through eBay, Amazon, and LaserPointerStore.com. We've got two Laser 303s, two Laser 301s, a Laser 303 with a rechargeable host, and I've also incorporated a pet toy laser into the mix for the sake of comparison. And I've also brought in a few of these higher power, more expensive 520 nanometer lasers. Uh, this one is a 240 milliwatt laser from Bartlett Unlimited, part of their stainless steel series. This one is a 500 milliwatt laser from laserpointerstore.com, their model 890 laser. And this is a 1000 milliwatt laser from Jet Lasers, their PLE Mini. As far as power goes, I found that in this batch, the laser 303s came in at about 45 milliwatts. The laser 301s came in at around 120 to 130 milliwatts. And the rechargeable 303 style came in at about 77 milliwatts. So these lasers over here are 520 nanometer direct diode lasers. We've got a 240 milliwatt laser here from Bartlett Unlimited. We've got a 500 milliwatt laser from laserpointerstore.com. And we've got a 1000 milliwatt or one watt laser from Jet Lasers, the PLE Mini. So we're gonna go ahead and jump right into the beam shots. And then after that, we'll take a more detailed look into the differences between the laser 301 and laser 303s. And we'll compare these with the more powerful direct diode lasers and also the keychain pet toy laser. And we'll talk about safety as well because all of these lasers are extremely powerful and extremely dangerous. Before we take it outside, I thought I'd try to show the dot size of these lasers by projecting them onto a piece of matte black poster board at about 20 feet or 6 meters away. As a side note, notice the difference in brightness between the two Laser 301s in the middle of the group. Although the one on the right looks substantially dimmer, they both measure the same on my laser power meter. Both measure about 130 milliwatts. I wonder if the dimmer 301 could be leaking infrared light, which is invisible, and that this infrared light could be affecting the laser power meter readings. If anyone might have an explanation, feel free to let me know in the comments. And here is a view of the beams looking back towards the lasers. Um, I did not use any fog or smoke to try to enhance the beams on the video. And so from left, again, we have 77 milliwatt. 125 milliwatt, 125 milliwatt, 45 milliwatt, and 45 milliwatt. Okay, here's the same setup, and this time I'm going to introduce a 500 milliwatt laser that I mentioned earlier, and there it is. It's just so you can see the difference. The 500 milliwatt laser is a 520 nanometer direct diode laser, whereas the 301 and 303s are 532 nanometer diode pumped solid state lasers or DPSS lasers. Some of the differences being the spot on the direct diode laser is actually more of a line, whereas the DPSS lasers are more of a refined dot or circular shape. And you might be able to see the color shift between the 520 and the 532 nanometer as well. All right, let's take it outside and I'll add the rest of the lasers for comparison and also do a quick daylight demonstration. Okay, on the right hand side of the screen, you can see that I selected a 301, a 303, and the 500 milliwatt. Now they're in the center of the screen, above the stairs, going down to the stairs. This is from about 18 meters away. And here we are under a bridge using the same configuration at about 50 meters away. And this was the setup for the outside beam shots and that stand of trees is about 200 meters away. So this is the same setup that I had in the indoor beam shots, but I've added a couple of the direct diode 520 nanometer lasers for comparison. And the first thing that jumps out is the differences in power. 
but I think this also shows the differences in beam qualities between the 532 nanometer DPSS lasers and the direct diode lasers. I think the lack of power in the cheap 532 nanometer lasers is almost made up for by their beam quality. Uh, the beams are thin and almost thread-like and the dots are small and round and seem to go on forever. It's hard to tell in the video but the beams of the direct diode laser seem to feather out at a distance and at great distances the spot appears more like a line than a dot. This is because of the increased beam divergence of the direct diode lasers. And looking from underneath you can easily see the difference in the width of the beams. And you can see some of the differences in divergence as well. So of course all of these lasers are too powerful to be used as pet toys or even as classroom laser pointers. And I can demonstrate that using this keychain laser pointer that I bought at a pet store. And even compared to the 301, you can tell the 301 is way too bright and way too dangerous to be used as a pet toy. In fact, you should use goggles whenever working with these lasers closely, even when staring at the dot, uh, especially when staring at the dot for a long time. Like if you're trying to burn things, You've got to have those glasses on to protect your eyes. And it's also been reported that these cheap 532 nanometer lasers leak infrared light. So that might be something to consider when buying glasses. You might want to get a pair that also filters out the infrared end of the spectrum. The laser 301 and laser 303s are all 532 nanometer DPSS lasers, meaning that the wavelength of the light is 532 nanometers or green and the DPSS stands for Diode Pumped Solid State Laser. And that means that a diode pumps infrared light through a couple crystals and then that light is culminated through a lens into a beam. Uh, the main difference that I can tell between the 301 and 303 is that the 303 has and comes with a star cap that screws into the front. Of course, when you turn the star cap, you get a kaleidoscope effect, which is pretty cool. Uh, both lasers have a focusing ring. Uh, both lasers have a side switch, which must be depressed to activate the laser. And both lasers have a key safety switch where you can turn off the laser and it will not activate, which is nice. And both lasers are powered by an 18650 lithium ion battery, which is inserted with the positive end towards the tail cap. So in this batch, the 301s were the more powerful, but I've seen other comparison videos that show that the 303s are more powerful. So I guess it just depends on which unit you get and where it comes from and how the driver is configured amongst other things. So my overall thoughts of these laser 301 and 303s are pretty good. Uh, you know, they come with a focus ring, they have a safety lock, uh, it's, it's a great size. Uh, the battery life is amazing and they take 18650 batteries. Uh, the star cap is, you know, novelty, it's a nice little bonus. Uh, the price is right. It's I think I paid an average of fifteen dollars for these, and but I've seen them from seven up to twenty five, thirty dollars. I do wish they had a little bit more power, but that said, uh, they are advertised at fifty milliwatts, at least the ones on laserpointerstore.com. So you know they're well within range of that. Uh, the side switch is a little annoying, having to depress it to activate the laser. Um, as you can see, I have to use rubber bands keep the lasers on for these beam shots. Uh, the key, although it's nice, uh, a couple of the units, uh, the, the locking mechanism was a little bit squirrely, but not a big deal. So, you know, overall the positives outweigh the negatives on these lasers, especially for the price point. Mm -hmm.